Imagine waking up four o'clock in the morning to the sounds of helicopter bombs. You know, I thought we were under attack. It was terrifying. It's being called the biggest gang crackdown ever in New York City. So why did we bring these charges and take these actions today? To make the city safer for its citizens, particularly those who live in and around public housing projects, who have suffered far too long with drugs and violence as an unavoidable part of their everyday lives. Early that morning in the Bronx, hundreds of officers descended upon the community, dressed in riot gear, with rifles, dressed for war. Couldn't think. I was just scared. I was scared for my son. That's me at the door of my bedroom, because I'm the first person to get up. They were yelling and shouting and screaming and interrogated us, wanting to know the whereabouts of my son. Where was he? So of course we told them he was at his dad's house. So they made a call and they said they got him and then they left. They attacked us, our whole community, you know, and it's, um, I just feel terrible with the whole thing. I feel like I've been violated totally, myself and my family, you know, and we were terrorized right in our own homes. And um, it just wasn't right. They are charging him with kilos of weed over a 10 year period when he was just 11 years old in elementary school. And that's just how ridiculous it is. They entered the homes, breaking down the doors where they found children, grandmothers, family members, shaking and crying in fear from the tactics that they were using. The impact on these families is devastating and remains today, years later. Well, this is Mark when he was a little baby. Look at him, he was so cute, right? <laughs> he was so cute, cute little boy. That's the love of my life. He's a big man now, oh my goodness. And he's still the same, he has that wonderful smile. He has written me and sent me numerous pages of lyrics, rap songs that he has written in prison, and that's how he spends his time to stay out of trouble. So what we saw from the Bronx 120 case is that many, many, many of the individuals of the 120 who were arrested were not found to be gang members, were not found to be gang affiliated, were not convicted of offenses related to um, the extreme violent conduct that was initially stated and alleged for the reason behind the raids. Paula Clark's footage was used to support a call by the NAACP Legal Defense Fund for a city council hearing on the NYPD's gang policing tactics. One and a half of these kids had nothing. They owned nothing. And some of them were um, indicted because of a phone conversation. But it's, uh, it's really sad. They took all the guys out of here. They took fathers, sons. Come on. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. 
thank you for joining us today. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and to answer honestly from council member questions this morning? I do. You may begin. Gang suppression operations are dangerous, and these dangers are not always readily apparent to the public. However, I assure you that, that the limited and brief disruption to community life during a gang takedown is greatly outweighed by the long-term improvement in community safety the takedown provides. The department continues to secretly target, surveil, and catalog young men of color. Those same individuals once subjected to the degrada degradation of unlawful stops and frisks are now instead stigmatized as dangerous gang members. They came in and kicked in, this, woke this baby up at five years old. A bunch of officers all over the place. He had to crawl out of his bed scared to death. And I mean, I know we look at it and we say, oh, gangs, you know, these are just people that are discardable. You know, they're in a gang, whatever. But we can't look at them like that. They are us, they are our people, they are our community, they're valuable. We can't continue to look at people as casualties. It just, it's just devastating to hear about how we see our young people. And, and, the, and the vocabulary that we utilize and the, and the lack of connection to helping them. I just hope that my son is never in a situation like that. But thank you. Understood. I have to once again commend the outstanding work of all our law enforcement officers, agents, and investigators. Today was a very good day for law enforcement, a really bad day for gang members, and I believe a great day for our communities. Thank you. This New York raid was so successful because they got 120 people 120 people, they scraped up together, and just one person died. My best friend, Gio, he died falling from a window the early morning of that rain. The person's not involved, they, his name was not on the list, but it's okay, because he has a worn out, but that's not an excuse for what happened. That's not an excuse for his death. I feel like Gio did fear for his life. But I feel like this is also tied to the trauma from like 2012, where Marley Graham died. Where Marley Graham can be seen walking into his home on East 229th in the Bronx. The NYPD rushes in seconds later without a search warrant and try to gain entry. And he's kicking the door because the door is locked. They came in with their gun drawn. That's our classmate. That was our friend. You know, the fear that put in us as kids to know that you can walk off the street and they break into your home and come and get you. I don't feel like we'll get the answer that we're looking for. Because I just feel like it's just another black kid off the street. No one cares. of hearing my best friend died, I'm reading that a bunch of my classmates were taken in this raid. 
We're all young black kids from the Bronx. Why is the feds involved? Why, why, why is ICE being called? Over 700 law enforcement officers descended on Bronx East Chester Gardens and the adjacent neighborhood of White Plains Road. 700 officers included NYPD, ATF, Department of Homeland Security, and ICE. Homeland Security came to this humble community. ICE was established to, after 9-11 to deal with terrorists that, that attacked us on 9-11. And for some reason now they're flipping out here, treating us like, like we're terrorists out here. We're not terrorists here. A transnational gang, by definition, is a group of people with at least one individual who is not a U.S. citizen, who is involved with criminal activity, but the, the other aspect is it has to have some international connection. So if we're connecting or communicating, whether it's by text message, email, and you have this one person who is not a U.S. citizen, and they're committing some form of criminality, and they're doing it in conjunction with others, you have a transnational gang. Once they get that label of being a transnational gang member, they become a target of HSI. The Bronx 120 case that HSI worked, 90% of the people were not foreign nationals. The crime itself was pretty much within the confines of the United States. It is the perfect example where they put a label on something that once you start to look at it, it's not a transnational gang. It is not a transnational investigation. They have access to Falcon. They have access to all these kind of databases where they're all talking to each other, the CIA, all of this stuff. All of us are impacted by this relaxation of due process, by this allowing for this kind of treatment of individuals, be they citizens or non-citizens. We've, we've missed him for all this time. The fact that he's coming home, we are so thrilled, we are besides ourselves. And he's gone through a whole ordeal in solitary confinement. He has gone through a rough time. I felt like I was alone, you know. We're not terrorists. They have us as we're terrorists. They took me away from my family. I felt like they abducted me. You took the plea as opposed to going to trial. So when you have a judicial system set up the way it's set up, we can expect anything positive to come out of it, you know. and, and being black, being a black man and living in America, you know, it's ridiculous. This whole thing is totally ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It was unjustified and it was also unlawful. What they did to these kids was horrible. They destroyed their lives and they destroyed the lives of many families in the Bronx. I think that tactic alone is a part of placing fear into someone. It's, it's supposed to break us. So we won't fight back. We won't resist, as they say. It's okay for you to come in my home. Why not? You're the government, right?
love my bitch. Two long years, man, almost three. Yeah. This is for my ones behind the wall. I said, me and all my niggas gonna fall. Mama said, I gotta stand tall. If I don't stand for something, I'ma fall. Rapping is my passion, yeah. This is what I chose to do. You can't trust the ones that's close to you. They put the toast to you. That's why I can never ever be approachable. This can't be negotiable. These streets full of bullshit, dude. They just want it.